coming at you live, and today we have episode 31 of the OG Podcast. I am your co-host, Handy Kilkim, along with my other co-host, OG Krogstad. And today is the epic podcast, the one that we've all been waiting for, well at least I'm super hyped for. This episode is specifically going to be about video games live. With maybe a few other small things, but mainly video games live. Um, but I'm going to keep it the same way as we normally do it. We're going to go ahead and talk about our weekend and our week and to see how it was. So, OG, how was your week? Well, we should say two weeks, because if I'm not mistaken, we didn't do an episode last week. Oh, yes, this is very only, true. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Um, but uh, we lost put a video game live together, so I mean, that's really a huge part of it. Uh, it's so hyped that I forgot any for everything else that's pretty much happened the past two weeks, because that's the main thing that matters. But actually, there is one other thing that I did do that the audience doesn't know. I actually downloaded and have been playing Final Fantasy A New Empire Final Fantasy 15 A New Empire to be specific so I'm playing that learning about it I actually did post a video on it as mm. far as like a let's demo kind of thing so that you guys kind of have a basic idea of what it is but I have been playing that and my first impressions is I actually do like it I think it's an interesting game and uh, it does have, if you're in the right guild or if you're in a strong enough guild, a lot of drama between uh, guilds. So it's it's kind of interesting. I'm playing a soap opera, it seems. So, nice. Uh, I'll give you all some details probably in another episode. But, I mean, honestly, that was the most import- important parts of my week. So how about yours? Oh, well, I, I, I actually have some, I actually had a little bit of drama uh, after uh, we hung out. Well, not like right after like that night, but uh, the day of my birthday was freaking awesome. Again, thank you guys for all that came in and wished me happy birthday and donated and hosted. Um, and I also found out that I'm actually not 34 this year. I'm 33, and I found out on the day of my birthday, so that was kind of cool. Um, you know you're getting old when you forget how old you are. Yeah, I th- I would literally <laughs> thought I was 34, and so the fact that I was thought that I was 33 this whole time, it's kind of like I like went backwards in time. So I'm kind of super hype about that. Um, but the drama that I had was Monday, which was the day after my birthday, <clears throat> which was our friend Chris's birthday. Shout out to our friend Chris, happy birthday. Yep, yep. Um. Yep. um my OBS stopped working. Well, it was working, but my cam, it stopped registering my cam. Uh, oh, lovely. So, so I had no cam. So what I decided to do um, was stop the stream because I literally updated OBS. I updated my, my webcam drivers, and they stopped work, and it just didn't work. So I said, you know what? I'm going to have to stop the stream, cancel the stream, and download a new um, streaming software. What up, Diesel Girl? Thank you for coming in. You're not late. You actually just came in the right time. You are not late. Um, It's all good. Um, So I had to, so I went and bought a new streaming software. Mind you, I said bought because OBS is the only one that's free. Um, and okay. I went and bought this one, and I thought it was going to be amazing because they said, you know, it actually uses less CPU than OBS and everything. Mind you, uh, this was the best one out of the two options that I had because it was either, with this other one, pay a monthly fee, which with XSplit, for y'all that don't know, anybody that uses XSplit, any of your streamers that use XSplit, you kind of want to show them more love than and then possible because they actually have to pay a monthly fee to stream uh, with their services so which I believe it's either nine dollars a month or they could do like a three month lease a a six month lease or a year lease if they do a year lease I believe it's like two hundred or three hundred dollars it's very expensive um, okay. so I didn't do that so I went and bought a new streaming service called um, game show 
which is one uh which is a one time fee for thirty bucks. So I'm like, ooh, I was like, good, I'll deal with it, right? Well, I get it up and running and everything. Well, come to find out, it was a lie. It actually runs my CPU more intensive than OBS. So I was already upset. Yes, my camera worked. But then, the next day after that, OBS, which is the one that's free, decided to say, you know what? We're going to work for you. So, uh, yeah, here you go. Um, <laughs> so I literally threw $30 out the window. That's wow, cool. that sucks. Yeah. You know, maybe to, to you know, to a lot of people thirty bucks is not a lot of money, but to me, that's a lot of money. Um, you know, especially when it's like practically wasted. Um it 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 kinda is a gut wrench. But hey, at least I can sit there and say if anybody's thinking about buying game show to do because of the low CP usage, I'm here to tell you um, game show does not have the lowest CP usage. Right now with OBS, I am running a whopping 22% CP usage. With um, with game show, I was running a 42 um, CP usage. Just saw you online. I'm okay. headed back from work. It's all good, Angela. It's all good. Thank you for coming in and lurking. I appreciate you guys, man. Yo, I appreciate you guys so much, man. You guys are awesome. So, yeah, that was pretty much my um, week, pretty much. And then, um, so as I was getting ready to show you guys my autograph, autograph stuff from the show, getting it all ready and all hyped, my daughter decides to spill every, spill um, punch all over my stuff. So Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that happens like that. That, that that happened like maybe twenty minutes before the show, uh. Okay. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you know, I didn't unwrap the DVD. I didn't, you know, but the booklet is kind of, you know, got um, punch all over it. So, that was a yeah. punch. that was literally a punch in the face. What's up, yeah. Gimp? Uh, what's up, man? Uh, hopefully, um. They, if they do, because they, these, the, the makers of the show, the head people of the show, they're actually going to be listening to this podcast. Uh, they're going to, uh, they're really interested to hear what we got to say about their show. Um, so, hey, maybe, you know, maybe next time, you know, we'll be able to get, uh, some more autograph stuff, or, you know, maybe they'll hook a brother up. You never know. Uh, because the autographs are literally ruined at this point. Uh, so, it's all good. It's all good, guys. It is what it is. It's materialistic stuff. But, you know, it sucks, but it's all good. But, I mean, without further ado, let's get into the show. Um, so, I'm going to let you go ahead and start off, Mr. OG. Well, I mean, obviously, this is the Video Games Live episode, and I just want to start off by thanking those who donated uh, to purchase our tickets. That was a huge deal, because in all honesty, I really wasn't expecting to go. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I saw they were coming to San Antonio, and I was like, oh, that would be nice, you know. Uh, But, you know, deep down inside, I was like, well, you know, I'm not really going to be able to afford it. But then all of a sudden, when I mentioned it on the podcast, people started donating for uh, me and your boy Handy over there to go. It was fantastic because not only was I able to knock off the very first item of my, uh, you know, my bucket list, because I actually put that on my bucket list in life, but I also got to go with one of the closest friends I've had in history, and that's just a huge, huge deal. So thank you guys for paying our way to get there. It was just, it, it, it was a great experience. The money definitely was not wasted. It was so worth it. It really so, was. It yeah, really was. thank you guys who donated for that. Like I said, we weren't expecting it. We weren't even really asking for it. Y'all we, just kinda, we, did, we didn't even plan on even bringing it up in the show. It just kind of happened. Yeah, we, we had no, I mean, it just happened to work out. And we're just so happy and thankful for that. So I wanted to get that out of the way first. Uh, but yeah, secondly... It was an amazing experience. It was, it was 
more than what I expected, to be perfectly honest. Because, you know, I figured, all right, we're going to go there. They're going to do some remixes of some of our favorite, you know, gaming series. And that would be it. But a lot of the stuff they were doing in between was actually kind of funny. Like, what they would do is, like, they would show, like, a game and then fit, filter in another game as a way of beating it. Like, they had, like, a duck hunt scenario where they used people from Contra to shoot all the ducks and everything <laughs> and put everything on fire. Like, it was just cool. And that's just an example of the many silly, dumb, but awesome things that they did in between each performance. Like, there was just a lot, a lot to it. So Yeah, um, it was definitely... So it was definitely... It was definitely really it was a really a good experience and the fact I, I i was and she said see you both have supportive fans it's a blessing to to get what you need when you don't even ask for it yeah it really is I, i'm truly thankful for that um and and the crazy thing was is i was going in blindfolded yes i've heard about video games done live um but i literally thought it was um something like the Sunbury, uh, what do you call it? The people that do like the uh, rock Christmas music. Oh, like a, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. orchestra, whatever, whatever, whatever. I yeah, Trans Siberian. Yeah. There you go. I thought it was like one of those kind of things. Um, so like I was kind of going in blindfolded. I didn't know that it was like the people that actually composed like video game music. Like I literally met the female that sung or that is singing in the Destiny 2 um, game. I met her. Um, she also, she does a lot of uh, big other stuff. Uh, we also met the guy that did the Amazing Spider-Man 2 soundtrack. And also the main head guy, he's been composing video game music for... What did he say? Like over thirty years, correct? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it was like I think he said twenty eight years, something like that. But a very long time, like <laughs> a really, really long time. Yes, and it's and you know and to see that to see like the actual people because let's be honest, they didn't have they don't have to do that. You know what I mean? But the fact that they actually you know what they want to like, like like tour the country and tour the world, and like you know showcase their you know. Their talent of what they've done is pretty freaking awesome. And then the fact um, that the lady, the one that's in Destiny 2, she was like composing her own music to like um, older um, to older video games. But it was like new. It was like newer. Um, it was like new newer pieces of music. It just it was so amazing because you wouldn't even have noticed that it was new. It like went right along with the game. Um, I have to say that it was it was a really surreal experience to the point that you didn't even realize that you were even listening to a uh, um, a live um, performance because, performance because not because it didn't sound live it sounded live but it was so like it was so perfect it was so like imperfection like it was crazy it's like you were driving in your car and listening to a cd you know what i mean and you had everything set up the way you'd want it and but you don't realize oh wait i'm actually here oh wow you know like it, yeah. it was crazy yeah and, and gimp said I w i'm so not impressed with the beta of destiny 2 well i'm gonna be honest with you man it's a de it's it's a beta you don't ever judge a game off of a beta um you know, the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 beta was good and the game turned out garbage. Or no, the beta was bad and the game turned out good. IW's beta was good and the game turned out bad. Um, so don't ever judge a game by its beta. Don't be a don't be a beta hater. Don't be a beta hater. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and here's the best part about the whole show. In my, I mean, there are good, good, good things about the show. Don't get me wrong, but this is the part that like touched my heart. The part that really touched my heart is that the the people that performed, that helped perform, the composers do the show was all the youth in the San Antonio. Uh, 
Yeah, we actually have a group in San Antonio called Youth of San Antonio, or YOSA, as some people know it as, and they were actually part of the performance. And they don't typically just, you know, pick up, you know, anybody. I mean, it's it's just one of those scenarios where, you know, YOSA was there, they talked to them, and they said, yeah, we'd love to do this. And, and the guy, the main guy was so happy. He was like, you know, we're composing with people that are younger, who appreciate gaming and it just made the whole you know doing music with them so much better and so much more fun like he had a blast doing it with them so there was a lot of hype for that too yeah i i, I that that made me want to be like like that just like warmed my heart because it's not every day that you know the youth gets to be a part of something like that like man if they would have had that when i was like in choir bro Dude, I'd probably still be in choir. Cause that's pretty freaking. Oh yeah, I think I would have actually continued to play the piano and done piano for it. You know. Yeah, yeah, definitely because that's um, that's really freaking amazing, man. And the fact that you know the the youth gets to be a part of it—that's something that they're always gonna remember. And the best thing about it was, is you couldn't even tell that they were youth at all. The way they were playing, and I say this because. Not only were there youth band players, there were youth choir members. And they sounded like grown adults. And it was pretty freaking amazing. Um, yeah, it was. It was, um, I don't know, it was something that I will never forget. Um, and I'm in the same boat with OG. I wasn't planning on going. I didn't really, um, I, I wanted to go. I've always wanted to go. But it was something that I just didn't know it was going to happen. And to be honest, even though our seats were really high up, they were probably the best seats that we could ever had. One, there weren't no people around us. Two, we got to zoom in and get like the like the like good shots. Unfortunately, because this will be shown on YouTube, we can't play any of the footage um, that we got due to copyright um, situations with YouTube. Because I don't want to get copyrighted and striked. Um, I thought about playing some music their music so you guys could get hear some of it but I don't want to get copyright striked on YouTube because this will be going to YouTube um, after this is um, done going live so it was it was one of the greatest experiences I ever had now I gotta say I want to kick myself in the butt because I should have recorded a lot more performances than I did uh, now thinking about it I regret not recording the God of War 2 performance. I regret yeah. not recording the Skyrim performance. I regret not recording the Legend of Zelda performance. Now, Yeah, you, actually that one I recorded. <laughs> you're going to be and you're going to sit there and say, "Well, Handy, why you didn't record those things?" Well, Handy I was trying to say battery because Handy was trying to go live during the whole time and our reception just sucked. Um, oh yeah, recession was horrible. Not even just for us, but for lots of people in the theater itself. Because I heard a lot of people yelling, "We don't have any reception." So <laughs> yeah, it was a thing in there. <laughs> yeah, we. I was literally trying to go live um, the whole time, and my goal was to get um, my goal was to get a picture with the Destiny Two girl and the head guy. Um, that was gonna be my goal. Um, but by the time I got to that point in life, I only had 6% battery and they weren't getting up and taking pictures. Not because, not because they said they weren't taking pictures, but I'm like this. If I see you just sitting down and you are like signing autographs and you're not getting up, like, you know, taking pictures, I'm not going to be that weird dude to say, Hey, can you get up and take a picture? Because you're automatically going to be feel like i'm not saying that these people were i'm just saying you know because i've been in weird situations before you're automatically going to feel propelled to do it for me because of the situation that i'm in and then so you're going to want to do it and then if one person sees you do it for the for the other person everybody's yeah everybody's going to want a picture for them and i didn't want to put them in an awkward position um so i had so i had like respect for that and i was like you know what i'm not going to ask for a picture um i'll be more happy to uh, just get an autograph and talk to them, and I don't know. I before I before I get to that part, I gotta ask you, what was like, what was your most favorite part of the show? 
Uh, give me that question one more time. I, it kind of cut out. Uh, what was your most favorite part of the show? Well, for for me personally, I was really hyped about the Final Fantasy VII's One Winged Angel performance. And that was actually the one video that I did post on Facebook. The first time I posted it, for some reason, it didn't have sound. So I had to delete it and repost it. And then it finally worked. Uh, so yay for that. Uh, but yeah, that was my big deal. Only because when I first, even though I I do hate on Final Fantasy VII a lot. You've got uh-huh. anyone who's actually like heard our past few podcasts have heard me here and there talk about how it's overhyped and i still stand by that however one thing that i will give final fantasy 7 a lot of credit for compared to most other final fantasies is their music was fantastic Mm -hmm. and when i first heard that when i was playing the game myself like i was blown away i was like wow this is the kind of music they're putting in final fantasy like i had never heard anything like it and then be able to see it at that time obviously yeah and just to see it live, you know, and me being a Final Fantasy guy, there was no way I could not, like, record that. Now, unfortunately, I, I missed about maybe the first maybe 10 seconds of it because my I had to restart my phone because I was having problems and my battery was low, too. So I barely was able to get enough juice to, to get it running. But I did end up recording that. And, yeah, that was my most hype moment. And I was just so excited. And even the people on Facebook, when I posted it, were responding, you know, positively to it. It was a... You, we lost you again for some reason. I don't know what's happening with your connection. Hello. But, yeah, it was definitely it was definitely awesome. Um, I don't know if OG's phone died, which is very interesting. But are you there? I'm here. Okay, we lost you for a second. I don't know what happened. Um Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it like, but it's okay, OG, because that ten seconds that you didn't get, I got that ten seconds. <laughs> I got that. Nice. Ten, I got that ten <laughs> seconds. Um, I definitely recorded that. Um, that one because that that game, that's what got me into Final Fantasy. Um, my, yeah. I I love Final Fantasy ever since Final Fantasy Seven, and the music was just epic. Um, now. My favorite performance is going to throw people off, but my favorite performance was the whole, the when she did her own music to um, Donkey Kong. Uh, I just thought that was cool. I thought that was different. I thought that was freaking awesome. Oh, yeah, she had her uh, custom instrument is what it was. Right. It was actually a custom instrument that's not normal, and uh, he called it something. I don't know if he, he called it, like, the Terminator or something. Yeah, like he that. called it the Terminator <laughs> flute, but it's actually, like, an electronic <laughs> flute. It was really right. freaking cool, and she also. And I agree. Used, and she also used it in the um, Final Fantasy performance. Also, um, mm-hmm. I didn't realize that until I watched the video. Right when, um, like right when he's like rocking out, she comes yeah. out and she rocks with him, and she's headbanging. And I didn't realize that was her until like, oh, I got yeah. watched the video up close, and she's headbanging, and then she goes off and she starts playing that electric flute. Um, Mind you, they did play Metal Gear Solid, um, but I was looking for Metal Gear Solid 1. I was more into the Metal Gear Solid 1 music than Metal Gear Solid 3. Um, every A lot of people liked Metal Gear Solid 3, but I'm like one of those people, like, I like the original, and it's just because I had so many good memories with Metal Gear Solid 1 when, this is before, when I first had a PlayStation 1, and I call it PlayStation 1, but I guess it is <laughs> PlayStation 1. Um, and I didn't have a memory card, so I literally beat, um, Metal Gear Solid 1 without turning off the system and playing it all the way through without a memory card. And I got so sucked into the, to the storyline and the music of Metal Gear Solid 1, like, it was emotional for me. Like, I think I cried towards the end, or in some parts, because if I remember correctly, somebody dies in the game and like the music got all sad like and I was all sad you gotta remember I'm like I'm like 9 or 12 years old when this game when this game came out so I'm all sad and stuff but like I I like literally I, I dove into that music um so but it was cool and then they also did Halo Halo 3 Halo I recorded Halo uh that was really cool um okay my wife 
wishes I would have recorded. She was, um, I told her they, 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 they did the Tetris performance. The Tetris, they did a Tetris opera, which I really thought was really freaking cool. My wife was like, That was pretty cool. My it was wife's done, like, you like did, in Russian. Yeah, it was done in Russian. My wife's like, You didn't record that? And I was like, um, Oops, my bad. <laughs> My bad. Uh, so, it was definitely cool. Now, the question I'm gonna ask you: What was your most surprising performance that they did? Like something that you just thought was like completely out of left field. Like, well, the most surprising performance, honestly, that I didn't think I would actually see was the Donkey Kong one. Like, because we had just talked about in the previous podcast how Donkey Kong doesn't really get any love. And lo and behold, during Video Games Live, they had this amazing Donkey Kong performance. Uh, and I kind of wish I recorded that because the second part of the remix that they played was the water level from Donkey Kong Country. And I love that song. That's probably my favorite song of all the Donkey Kong Country like sound uh, soundtracks. And when they played that, I was just I was just involved. I was I felt like I was swimming myself in there. Like it was just something crazy. If nothing else, that might be my second favorite, you know, uh, moment in the whole thing. But that was the most surprising, though. Did not see that coming. No, no. Okay, so okay now now this brings me to the next question. Does that water level sub sub beat? Does that water level music beat Mario's water level music? Oh, yeah, hands down. Hands down. Um, hands down. When I first heard the Mario one, you know, it was all right. Like, it didn't really do much for me. Mm-hmm. But when I first played Donkey Kong Country and I first got to the water level and heard that song, it was one of those, like, songs that kind of relaxes you. And I was just, like, and at that time I was really into, like, you know, smooth kind of chill music. And that was, like, the most chill I had heard in a long time in video games that wasn't like super depressing but just chill and good yeah and and you know the and another cool thing i'm gonna kind of give someone a little bit of uh hype here there's uh one of my favorite youtubers his name is smooth mcgroove uh look him up if you've never looked him up he does acapella for a lot of different sound uh songs from video games Mm -hmm. and he happened to do the water level from Donkey Kong Country as well and I have that on one of my favorites on YouTube now y'all can't see because I have that set on private but just look up Ooh, Smooth and look up his music and like it's just it's just awesome how he does it too but yeah that's one of my favorite video game songs of all time like I'll, I'll tell you right now it's it's high up there on my list probably top five nice nice I had to say the my most surprising one to actually see, and 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 this is a surprising that I didn't expect. Although the Donkey Kong is my favorite, because like we said, we were talking about um, last podcast, Donkey Kong just doesn't get no love. Um, but my most surprising was to see Street Fighter. I don't know why I just didn't mm-hmm. ex- I just didn't expect to see Street Fighter. What's up, Ice Man? What's good, my brother? How you been, my friend? Uh, yeah, I just didn't expect to see the Street Fighter because I didn't. I don't know. It's weird, right? I remember playing. Well, Go I ahead. can kind of understand how that got sucked in because I know there are a lot of like guile themed uh, memes on YouTube uh-huh. where people do video. Or they do videos on YouTube that's not related, but then they put guile's music on top of it and it makes it kind of funny, kind of a thing. Yeah. So they decided, well, you know what, since Street Fighter is still a thing and the classics are the ones that get played the most, let's go ahead and actually play the classics. So they didn't just play, like, the, the newer, like, Street Fighter Five versions or whatever. They played, like, the old school Street Fighter Two versions and did, of course, their remix of it. But it, right. was, it was legit, though. I actually, I, I wish I recorded that, actually. That is one of the things that I missed that I should have recorded. No, you, you should be able to hear me, Iceman. Everybody else can hear me. Uh, you, there might be something going on on your end, buddy. You might have your audio turned down or something. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, the reason why I, I just didn't think, because, like, I don't remember Street Fighter music. Like, I don't know what it was. Like, I just didn't, like, I didn't get submerged in Street Fighter music. Um, I don't really think in any fighter, well, take that back, because I remember Tekken very well. Um... But, um, 
I don't remember. I actually remember it. I remember Street Fighter a lot, uh, especially Ken Chun-Li and Gao's music. Yeah. Those are the ones that I memorized the most that I actually kind of enjoyed the most. So, yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, the the only thing that I felt really, this is these are the two things I felt bad that I didn't know the other two games that were that were being played. Um, I still don't know that one game, and then what was the other game? Um. Oh yeah, the two that we didn't. No, we didn't know right off the bat because it was one that you thought was. I thought it was a Assassin's uh, Creed. Assassin's Creed, but it turned out to be something else. Uh, I can't remember now. I. Because I think they were like in a desert or something. Yeah, like that, and I was and like, I was like Assassin's Creed. Um, it might have been like Journey or something. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but uh, I, I, it's not a game that I'm familiar with either. So that's why I didn't remember it. <laughs> no big deal. I felt bad though. I felt bad that I, I should have known these games, and especially when, when. Okay, so check this out. Right, the the one of the what would you call them ushers? I guess right ushers. Or am I, yeah. am, am I speaking too much church? No, the uh, ushers. Right. Okay, so uh, one of the ushers, after the performance of one of those things, was it was like, he's like, hey, I know I'm kind of old and, you know, I don't know much about these games, but what video game was that? That, that was very beautiful. And me and OG had to look at him and you, we said, you know what? <laughs> don't feel bad. <laughs> we don't know what game it is either. And I really felt bad yeah. because... We should know those games. Um, yeah, we should. Yeah, we uh, we, we had know, an epic feel. <laughs> we, yeah, that was that was like the total epic. But it made the it made the usher feel really awesome inside. He was like, yeah. "Yes, I'm not as old as I think I am." You know, kind of moment. <laughs> um, he saw even these. Well, to him, were kids. He saw even to these kids, they don't know it either. I thought it was maybe some like um, Japanimation game or some Japanese game. Um, and I remember you asked me a question where waiting where we were waiting for my wife to pick us up, and you asked me what game was I surprised um, that they did not play, or what franchise was I surprised that they didn't play, and I came up with it now, and it actually hit me while I was in the shower the other day. You of know course. what? You know what? Yeah, I don't know what it, it always comes to me in the shower, like even my like when I'm like writing music and stuff. Um, you know what game it was, man? You ready? OG, you there? What's up? You ready for the? You ready for it? I'm surprised it didn't do Contra. Huh. Well, I don't know. It's. I don't know that the Contra music was really ever popular, though. I shoot. I, I love Contra's music. I mean, the game itself is popular. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I absolutely love, like, the first three that came out. I didn't play any of the ones after the first three, but the first three were freaking fantastic. But as far as music's concerned, I really, I mean, don't get me wrong. I actually enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But I, I've, I don't think I've ever really heard anyone hype it enough. I mean, I'm not even sure if Smooth McGrew even has a song. Actually, he might have like one of the Contra. I one actually, games, I actually have a Contra remix in my uh, stream video game playlist. Meaning, like, because I, I have like a playlist of songs that I have played during the stream. You know, so when right. people don't, um, don't um, play music, like there's still music playing. I actually have a Contra remix. It's really freaking awesome. I actually that's cool. As you they said, Contra was awesome. I wish I could afford the NES cart for my collection. Oh, why don't you just get the ROM? Well, he's talking about actually having a hard copy. The point of having a collection is having a hard copy. Oh, yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. That's true. That's how I used to be. I used to be a collector and you know you having a hard copy is proof that you own it a digital copy is not a collecting i mean at least in my opinion i mean that's, no, that's true i mean because honestly you could get you could you know illegally get a hard uh you know digital a ROM. Copy. yeah a ROM. but as far as getting a hard copy now that's legit that's old school. that's, very that's true. collecting that's very true. and being that i used to manage a collectible store i should know you know yeah <laughs> so, that's very true <laughs> the man with the plan coming down saying Yo, it's not collectible, man. That's true, though. Mm-mm. That's very true. 
So, okay. Now, here comes the part of the show that I don't want to talk about because in my opinion, I love the whole thing. In fact, I encourage you guys, when video games live comes to your town, go. Um, I you need to go. Just go. Even if you feel like it's going to be dumb, I don't want to hear video game music, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there is nothing more like hearing, uh, I, my favorite part was hearing the, 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 the choir. Why? You sit there and say, why? Because I, I was a choir head. I was in choir all through school. People say, well, that was an easy class. No, I actually enjoy singing. In fact, sometimes you'll hear me singing during my streams, um, and I, and in my opinion, I don't think I sound that bad. Um, so, uh, I, I, I loved, um, the choir part. I thought the choir part was so awesome. Um, but and I'm on the flip side of that cause I'm more into the musical instruments. Now I do respect the choir cause I mean, I, I do like the kind of drama that it brings to the music, the but I've always been an instrument guy and I, I really love that. You know, as far as you know, comparing the two. Go. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go to Facebook because this is a very this is a very peculiar thing about him or them, and I think it's really cool though because Facebook does need love. They they mainly operate out of Facebook. So go to Video Games Live. You're gonna see a little like a little green guy that looks like a Space Invader. That's gonna be their page, and you'll find everything. You'll find everything that um you need to know like when they're coming into your town or and tour dates and stuff and here's what i want you guys to do if you don't have to do this but it'd be awesome after i send this video to because he wants me to send this video to him uh directly um he wants me to message this video to him directly i want you guys to message in his box and just say hey we come from Handy Kill Cam. Handy Kill Cam sent us. Handy Kill Cam sent us. Handy Kill Cam told us all about you guys. Blah, blah, blah. And just, just, just show him the same love that you show me. But just, you know, put it in his box and he'll gladly appreciate that. Um, so, now, and again. they're really good about their updates because the only reason I knew that Video Games Live was coming to San Antonio was because of Facebook. Yeah. Now, I first heard about them when they had a, when I had a MySpace. That was the very first time I ever heard of them. What but at the first, freak I didn't is MySpace? Was, no, I'm just kidding. I know exactly. That's how long ago it was. And you know, when I first saw it, you know, I didn't think it was a big deal. I thought maybe it was just some advertisement trying to sell me some crap, so I ignored it for the longest time. And then what really captured me to want to go is they did a PBS special, which for those who don't know, PBS is basically one of those. Uh, television programs that's not really paid for. You have to pay for it yourself. And it was like, you know, one of those local kind of channel things. Yeah, so strictly out of San Antonio. We, strictly out of San Antonio, unless there's other places that have it. I don't think but, so. Uh, but I'm not, sure. I'm not sure either. But either way, I actually got to see one of their performances on PBS. And that changed everything. I was like, oh my God, I have to go see this, you know. And then sometime later, when I have, you know, Facebook, I see that they actually have. A Facebook page, so I went ahead and liked it, and you know, occasionally they give us updates on you know where they're going, and boom, I saw that they were coming to San Antonio, and I was like, wow, first and, time. And what happened was, is he he posted it on Facebook, and I believe he tagged me in it, and my, and I didn't even look at it. I just, I just like you know what, I just said I just comment. I was like, want to go, <laughs> and he was yeah, like, he did. And he was like, if we can go. And I was like, I was like, if God present, if God presents a way to go, we're going to go. Um, so, and here we are, we went. Um, now I really don't want to, I got to ask this question though, for the sake of the podcast. Sure. Um, not because I feel like the show is amazing, but what was your disappointing, what was the disappointing part of the show? Well, it wasn't a part of the show. It's what they didn't have. Okay. And I wish they'd have done Mega Man in okay. general, like like whether the Mega Man X series or regular Mega Man. But I wish Mega Man was somewhere in that mix of music. 
Uh, all obviously because I'm a huge Mega Man fan. However, on the flip side of that, I'm okay with them not doing it because that DVD that we purchased, uh, that actually has some of their Mega Man. You're muffled. You're muffled. You're muffled, buddy. Oh, sorry. The actual Mega Man or the DVD that we actually received has some Mega Man tracks on it. So nice. that kind of makes up for the fact that they didn't play it live. But that would be the only thing that I was disappointed in, if you will, is the fact that they didn't have anything Mega Man like. But as far as what they played, the performance in general, I have no complaints about. You know what I mean? It was awesome. just so awesome. And I I can't think of a better time I could have had in my life. Oh, you know? no. And it was, it was really good, too. To spend it with you, not to say not only because it was the day before my birthday and it's been a while since me and you got to hang out on my birthday or around my birthday or, you know. That's true. That was a lot of good things. Yeah, it really was. And the fact that we just got to hang out and it just be us. And it was no drama. Yeah, he even got to meet my daughter who my daughter is now his biggest fan. Um yeah, apparently uh, kids love me. I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah, my 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 daughter. There's a rumor uh, heard today that oh, what, the Mega Man movie is going to come out. What? Have you heard of this rumor, OG? I have not heard that rumor. I'm we we will look into this rumor, and we will talk about it next week. Uh, just because I need some substance, I need some ground, I need some foundation. To stand on this rumor. Yeah, because best believe I would go see it. Yeah, I think we Even probably... if it's crappy, I'll go see it. Yeah. I'm in uh, even video game movies, whether they're good or bad, mm-hmm. I'll watch it. I mean, I've seen the Street Fighter 2 movie. I've seen... I the... mean, that's all I can tell you. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen the Final Fantasy Spirit movie. Yeah, The Spirits uh, Within, which... Uh, yeah. Uh, just uh, garbage. Yeah. They, they, they should have made Advent Children the actual movie version as opposed to spirits within, but whatever. And I've seen you know, all... some guy at GameStop tried to argue that with me a long time ago. I don't know if I ever told you that. No, you the never guy... told me this. Yeah, one time me and one of our old friends went up to GameStop, and this was back in the old days, by the way. And you What's know, up, Nemo? Was... Go ahead. You know, one of the guys was working there was talking about how awesome the movie was. I told him I was disappointed, and he was, and he was like, why? And I was like, well, you know... You're muffled. It was hyped as being a Final Fantasy VII kind of thing, and it didn't have much to do with it. And he like he tried to argue with me that it was just like Final Fantasy VII, that all the green stuff you saw was like the live stream and all this other stuff. And I was like, well, I didn't see no character references. I saw no story references. And it just felt like a regular movie that just had a Final Fantasy name on it. It had nothing to do with it. It really had nothing to do with Final Fantasy, in my opinion. It didn't even have, really, Final Fantasy music. Um, I actually feel like Final Fantasy, the new one that just came out, the one that that actually does, like, the backstory. um, Yeah, Heaven Children. Yeah, that's, like, the best Final Fantasy movie out, period. Agreed. Um, I actually have that still. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I I watched that a lot. Um, now another bad movie. The Halo movies are terrible. Um, terrible. Movies? Yes, they're Halo movies. They're on Netflix. I they're, didn't know that. they're terrible. <laughs> this is why. This is why a five-year-old kid, as I'm recording the Halo performance, why are they playing Halo? Uh, that, that oh ex- yes, I remember that. That was the funniest part. Of the whole that was the movie. Yeah, that was so funny. So I'm. It recording. was hilarious. Like I tried not to laugh. I was just like, oh my god. I, I was like, oh. This. I was like, that kid told me. He said, he said, he said, why are they playing Halo? And I'm just like, oh. Uh, and it's probably yeah, because yeah. of those movies. Because it's actually a good game. <laughs> Diesel said, sorry, it's not an actual movie. It's a, it's a Mega Man game that will be like Super Mario Maker. Hmm. Actually, that could be good. Because mm. Super Mario Maker was a huge deal. Because nobody knew what it really was going to be. When it came out, it became a huge hit. And, you know, being that Mega Man sort of has a similar type of playthrough where it's kind of a side-scrolling, platforming kind of a thing... That could be pretty cool. Like, I'm just imagining, you know, (laughs) being able to build in, you know, certain monsters or certain traps. And, you know, it it just sounds crazy. I I like it. It's kind of like they're saying, you know what? We can't figure out how to make a new game for Mega Man. So let's just make, let the people make it. (laughs) 
<laughs> that's yeah. like, I mean, I'm down you for it. What? That's what they did for Mario Maker, and look how popular it became. It's true, it's true. Diesel Girl said, don't let my son hear you say that, Handy Kill Cam. My son worships Halo. He's seen all the Halo movies on Netflix for real, LOL. Yeah, well... <laughs> For a child, that's they're they're pretty cool movies because the graphics are cool, but the acting is bad. Um, <laughs> really. Which, by the way, I don't know if you remember this, but part of the Video Games Live segment, they actually had bad acting. It was like the top ten worst. Oh acting yeah, I remember that. And it, I didn't record that. I kind of wish I did. I wish it was hilarious. Just, yes, but it's true though because Resident Evil, whichever Resident Evil that was was probably the worst dialogue I've ever played in a game in my life. Resident Evil's always had bad dialogue, though, um, in my opinion. I'm surprised they didn't put Win back in there, because the dialogue in Win back was horrible. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you. And you guys, you guys are probably still, you guys are probably, hopefully, they are still listening to this um, podcast by then, um, this far in. If not, then we've epically failed as podcasters. Um as as they go back and they listen to this video, I'm pretty sure uh, Winback has fallen underneath the radar. So guys, over at Video Games Live, go play Winback and listen to the dialogue and put that in your top twenty worst dialogue ever. Um, Lo uh, Lo Lma, I agree. The bad acting. He watches a lot of shows. With bad acting, a lot of kids do these days, and this is why bad games come out because a lot of because they're just catering to the kids, so they know all kids want are flashy, cool, three dimensional graphics with a lot of explosions, and as long as it has that, it's gonna be the top, gonna be the top game sold. <laughs> so you know that's why you know I, I'm not surprised that a lot of these games, a lot of movies have these issues because a lot of times they're catering to the younger audience um before we get off track here um what was i gonna say so like yeah like i i'm gonna have to say my my disappointing part and it wasn't even their fault it was actually the theater's fault kind of sort of the little skirt under like on the screen, on the middle screen, if you guys would just oh, remove right. that little skirt on top of on top of the screen, people that are on row H could see the whole screen. I was kind of disappointed I could not see the whole screen because I couldn't read certain things that need to be read. Um, and then another disappointing, which I don't expect any, I don't expect any person to do this. But it would have been nice to be able to buy a DVD from our show. I would have been more hyped to buy a DVD from our show than anything. Yeah, but uh, how? I mean, is it really possible? To I don't know. That's why I said a DVD that quick. I mean, I, I think that's a little unreasonable. That's why I said. It, that's why I said it's not possible. But I'm just saying it'd be freaking awesome. I yeah, I, I wouldn't put that as a disappointing mark. That would be just kind of a, I wish technology was better. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, let's scratch that. I wish technology was better because my wife's like, why isn't Dwight posting more videos of the show? I want to see more of the show. And I'm like, well, I don't know why he's not posting more of the show. I saw the whisper there. D, so, I have whispers show up in the chat. So, thank you for whispering me the Mega Man info. I will, I will study it and I will send it over to my colleague because he is more of a Mega Man buff than I am. So I will send it his way and let him dissect it, and we will talk about that in next week's show. Thank you for giving yep. us um material. This is why we appreciate you guys being interactive um, in our show, and this is why we do the show live because as you feed us, we feed you. Um, yep. Help me help you. Help me help you. <laughs> so, but, I mean, other than that, um, I had to say, like, one of my biggest highlights of this show, too, was just being able to tell them about, like, because they asked me, um, well, you were there. I'm, I'm saying this to the to the, to the yeah, I got podcast. You. Um, they were asking me, you know, how I got into gaming and stuff, and I told them, you know, my story about 
how gaming was really my therapy and how you know through the years when the revol the evol the revolving the evolving well, however you want to say it controller evolution of controllers evo- yes evolution of controllers through the years <laughs> of since 1973 when games were first created um uh, helped um open my hands and be therapeutic of my hands and it was crazy because i didn't ex- i didn't expect the response you know, of being able to touch them. They were so touched and so moved by my story. Um, it humbled me because I wasn't doing it to, to for any reason, but just to be honest about who I am and why I game, why I stream, why I do what I do. And it touched them. And it was such an amazing experience to have, to be able to touch somebody that touched you with their music and touched you with their performance. And it just reminds me, and I'm going to say this during the podcast. Don't ever, ever sit down on the story that God gave you. Don't ever sit down on the journey that God gave you. Always speak about the journey and the story that God gave you. Because just as you might think it might not touch somebody, it may touch somebody and it may inspire somebody. And it may you might in, inspire somebody that you don't even know or even realize that you can inspire. And that right there was amazing. And that right there was when one of the guys said, hey, man, um, when you get this podcast done, I want you to mail it or email it to me. And, uh, you know, I, w- I want to listen to it and see what you got to say about the show. That's freaking amazing. And I, that, that, made, that made my night. Uh, because had I would have sat down on my story, had I would have sat down on what God gave me, had I would have, let's just be real, right? Had I would have sat down on my testimony, who knows what would have happened? Um, so or nothing would have happened. Nothing would have happened. Yeah, exactly. Nothing would have happened. I'd have been like all the other people, being crybabies for standing in line. Um, there was a lot of people crying, being crybaby about not wanting to wait in line. Um, yeah, we actually had quite a few people leave in front of us and behind us because they didn't want to wait for the meet and greet. Honestly, it was worth the wait just to be able to see them in person and, you know, interact and whatnot. Now, I didn't get anything signed myself because, I mean, I'm... We lost... This before. Yeah, okay. We lost you at right where you said signing. I don't know. I think your internet sucks this today. Um, but, uh... So I don't know what you said. We don't. None of us know what you said. You oh, know. okay. I just didn't do any signing. Okay. Uh, I just, but then we did have a lot of people that got out of line, you know, when we were waiting because they just didn't want to. They just weren't patient enough to wait, and it was worth the wait. It really was, and and here's another thing. One of the composers, I forget. It was something Ramos. I can't remember his name right now. I'm so oh, sorry. Ray. Ray. He actually lives in San Antonio. Yeah, yeah he Ray actually lives. Yeah, Ray Ramos. Uh, I think it's Ray Ramos. He actually lives in San Antonio. That's pretty freaking awesome. And Diesel Girl says, it's Alpha Omega, so fair warning. He swears a lot, uh, but he's a cool guy for gaming info. Yeah, uh, speaking about Alpha Omega, something was brought to my attention about Alpha Omega. Um he actually, they actually own an arcade here in San Antonio, and they host gaming, uh, fighting gaming. Wait, is it Alpha Omega? It's Alpha. No, it's the Sin guy. I don't remember exactly, but Iceman was telling me about him. Um, but he actually, he's a he's a Twitch person, uh, Twitch personality, as we say, Twitch coworker, as we shall say, and he owns an a uh, fighting arcade, and they host like world uh, world fighting uh, um tournaments here in san antonio i just thought you should know that um i think that's really freaking cool uh, that is pretty cool and actually speaking of tournaments uh game over is hosting a smash brothers tournament soon i forgot to uh finish that or i mentioned that i actually just saw it on my facebook feed because apparently that's how i get all my information now other than the research i do on my own but the stuff that i don't expect comes through facebook and uh last time it was golden night now it's going to be smash brothers so i might be hitting that up if i get out of work on time so, what time what uh, time and what time what time what time, what time? uh yeah let me look it up while we're is, doing it, is this smash brothers 64 
Or yeah, is... Smash Brothers for the GameCube, if I'm not mistaken. But ooh, let me prefer her. Ooh. Yeah, I believe they said GameCube. Your boy like, Andy was a beast it. back then. To say. There is Game Over Video Game. Super Smash Brothers Melee Tournament on GameCube. Mm. Uh, let's see. And it says it's Sunday, August the 6th at 2 p.m. So it's going to be from 2 to 5. Hmm. So, yeah. If, uh, is it far? If you can make it out there, I mean, that would be cool. I'm not is sure it... if I'm going to be able to make it, but I put that I'm interested. Well, how about this? Okay. Are you working Sunday? See, that's what I'm not sure about. And if I am working Sunday, I don't know what time I'm getting off because we, our time off depends on how fast we get the work done. So there is no guarantee that I'm making it. And that's why I'm okay. just holding my tournament. So if you're not working Sunday, you want to pick me up Sunday? Yes, if I'm not working that day, then I'll do that. Okay, that so sounds good. I'll there keep you go. posted on that. We'll see what happens. That's good. And then we need to, we, we need, we need to, we need to find this guy with the whole, um, uh, um, we need to find a way to get a hold of this guy with the fighting tournaments. Just because, not necessarily because I want to do anything, but it would be nice to create uh, to connect with somebody on that level. Um, you Especially know, if they're local. Yeah, we need to support our local, you know, gaming yeah. facilities. Yeah, that, I mean, we need to focus on getting people out there. You know, right. chilling with each other. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Connecting. Right. That's why I said, like, I don't care how anybody else is in San Antonio. I'm all about building and helping each other. I'm not about this, everybody doing everything on their own, like it is in the music business with San Antonio sometimes. Um, uh, by the way, tomorrow there might be a possibility it will be late for me to play GBs. Uh, my girl may be doing something for her birthday. Depends. Well... Uh, if it begins to be too late, it's probably not going to happen because you guys got to remember, I can't be, I can't be, um, I can't be up too late guys. Cause I got to be up early in the morning because I got to stream the next day. And if I'm tired and I'm poopy, then my stream's going to be tired and poopy. Um, you know, just like you don't show up to work tired and poopy. So I don't know. And you know, getting a hold of headshot, that's kind of difficult. And today, today GB's was rough. Today GB's was really rough with me and Headshot. We won one game. Um, it was really rough. Um, and then we like lost one, and then we won one, and then we lost one. The pressure was really on. But so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Diesel Girl said, "Would be awesome for you to meet Alpha." Alpha. And the Game Chasers crew, that would be uh, awesome too. Yeah, um, so it is Alpha, that's right. Yeah, so Alpha Omega actually bases out here in San Antonio. And somebody else was telling me about them, and they didn't even realize that I lived in San Antonio. And I was like, because they're like, man, you should check him out. He's like this fighting, he like specializes in fighting. And I made a joke, and I was like, one of the jokes was, what does it mean to be a specialist in a game? You know what I mean? Because it's like, can I say I specialize in Call of Duty? Yeah, I was just joking, right? Well, come to find right. out, like, this dude, like, really hosts tournaments, and he's, like, really cool, and uh, he, uh, he, they're in San, he's in town in San Antonio. So my goal is to follow his channel and show some love and see if we can just meet up and connect with him, man, and uh, maybe give him a little shout out on the podcast here there, too. Who knows? Well, we already kind of did. Um, but you know, that would be cool. I'm all, I'm, I'm about the same way. I'm all about connecting with our community, helping our community grow. Um, especially about helping, helping the youth. I'm all about, uh, helping youth. Um, there's this one kid named T money and I've, he, he, he's, he's not under my wing, but he's like, he's dear to my heart. Um, just because he's a nice, humble kid. He's 13. He kicks butt in Call of Duty. Um, and not only that, but his mom works with kids with cerebral palsy, uh, which is really cool because I have cerebral palsy. So it's kind of weird how God is like, all put us all together. And so, you know, I'm all about helping the youth and helping other people grow and helping people get out there because 
The youth is what's going to keep this going. The youth is what's going to keep gaming going. The youth is what's going to keep Twitch going. The youth is what's going to make gaming more competitive than it's ever have been. Um, so, definitely. Definitely all about helping the youth and helping other people grow and get where they want to get to succeed in life. Sir, do you have anything you would like to say, Mr. OG? Well... Uh, not alongside th that, because I mean, you pretty much uh, said said all the the good highlight parts. But I mean, honestly, just to kind of echo what you're saying, I mean, we're all about you know helping the community out and getting gamers actually physically together to chill. And that's why I bring up certain stores from time to time, so that these businesses who cater to gamers can get some love. Because that's how they stay in business. You show up, you know, maybe buy a drink or something if you can't buy any merchandise, just to show, or just to show up and show them love, so they see that people are coming. It, it means a lot to them, you know, whether it be you know a comic store, a video game store, trading card games, whatever. As long as it has something to do with gaming, we're all about supporting and you know giving shout outs. And even f for people who are doing music, like I, I did a shout out to Smooth McGrew because. You know, like I said, music and video games for me has always been a big deal. So I'm going to shout out to those who do that. So that's why you like, you know, video games live and smooth and groove. Like those are like the, the hype moments for me as far as music and gaming. I like to combine anything gaming with life possible. And that's just, there's just so many ways to do it. And yeah. I'm sure we're going to find more things to come. And, you know, and if anyone has suggestions, you know, feel free to throw it in. Or if you know any places that need love, I mean, we can definitely show love to that as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely, you know? definitely. Um, de we're all about giving love. And Diesel Girl said, um, T Money is an awesome kid. Uh, has a, He has a lot of potential. T Money really does have a lot of potential, man. And it's really cool that I'm blessed to play with him because... Whether he sticks in gaming, whether he does what he wants to do. Because right now, Team Money, uh, he wants to be baseball. He wants to do baseball. I'm, I'm totally uh, supportive in whatever he wants to do. But I have a feeling, once he really dives into Call of Duty more, when he gets to the boosted ground, um, he's, he's really going to take off. Um, he's actually in the competitive, well... In GBs, he plays a. I've seen this. I've played along this kid. Okay, I've seen this kid go forty and five. Um, I've seen this kid go thirty and two. Um, with ease, this kid has dropped nukes on my stream. Easy, okay. Um, and uh, but he's just so humble and he's so cool about it, and he doesn't care that I suck, cause compared to him, I suck, and he just we just enjoy playing. Um, you know. And those are the kinds of people that you want to groom and you want to grow and you want to see succeed. Um, you know, to right. add to that, uh, I kind of something that I miss that I'm going to kind of give an old shout out to was an old store that I used to chill with called Genesis Games. Uh, that was a place that bought the store that I usually used to work for. And it became more about video games and card games. And I used to see a lot of potential one in that store like i would see people playing halo and doing so well people playing gears of war and doing so well you know and i saw a lot of talent i mean even to the point to where i even saw some compete you know and then and, and i actually didn't know but there was actually a small group of people who actually played it in lg i had no idea that they were mm -hmm. in it i knew they were damn good but mm -hmm. you know because it was a team that beat us in the finals of the gears <laughs> of war but anyway like i, I miss being able to see that kind of talent roll in a business like that mm -hmm. and you know so i want to give a shout out to that old store that no longer exists um, <laughs> but lots of talent came into there and that was based in universal city and then we also have another store in shirts where halo was huge and in a little bit of gears of war and other things but halo was a big deal there to where they were getting like you know 60 man tournaments for teams and stuff and sometimes bigger um the place was called trader's planet it was in Shirts, Texas, where me and your boy Handy grew up. And, All about you know, them they were doing boys. it big. Oh, yeah. Shirts Boys. But, yeah, they were doing it big. And it's a shame that they uh, sold the, you know, they closed down. But, but honestly, with the tournaments, like, it was hype. And they were doing something big in a small city. So, you know, and so I saw a lot of talent come in there. And I miss just watching 
the talent. Like, I thought, even, even if I wasn't playing, right. just seeing them do it's so well. And you don't Sorry, do guys. Much. YouTube just it came up on my... fell out of my backpack. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, it fell off my grocery Oh, my cart. Jesus. The weird I commercial's it. playing right now. Okay, sorry. I do not sponsor that ad. Um, I accidentally <laughs> need my mouse. Okay, I need my mouse. I mm. need it, and I hit a left click, and all of a sudden, YouTube just opened up. Uh, oh, lovely. Well, it was just really weird. I'm glad it wasn't <laughs> nothing weird. Uh, there's a boom. Yeah. There's a there is a boom of gaming stores in the area, and I love it. It's my go place. Yo, that that used to be our hangout. See, me and OG, we didn't we didn't <laughs> we didn't go hang out at house parties. I was always the one that did the house parties back then, but. We did, We always went to game stores, and we always like did gaming stuff, and we always did like gaming tournaments at his house, or or we would go back then. We would go to EB Games, which rest in peace, EB Games. Uh, EB Games wasn't really that amazing, but the people there were amazing. Um, yeah, the people that worked there were really cool. Will, 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 you still my homie, even though a lot of us picked on you a lot, man. Will, you were still my homie. <laughs> Albert was cool too, man. Albert was Albert was like OG, man. Um, uh, you don't you don't talk to Albert no more, huh? I'm talking about like Albert, the one that worked at the store. The one that worked there, yeah. No, I don't. The only one that I saw after the fact was Tony because he used to work under me. But then after we both left the company, I haven't really talked to him since. Yeah, yeah, man, that's that's crazy. And, and it was kind of sad because me and him used to play. Uh, we used to practice playing Street Fighter Third Strike. It was me, Tony, and my boy Tommy, and we were like going hard trying to practice for Evo. Uh, so he was a really, really good uh, fighting game player, and he was actually a really good Halo player. So you know, I mean, like I said, he was talented too. <coughs> he said, "Okay, so now remember we've we've had this discussion. This question probably linger on three episodes now, but I have to resurrect it. I have to resurrect it once again because I saw something yesterday." While I was at Wing Daddy's, that sparked my interest, and it sparked the question. Do you remember the question? Mm -mm. The question was, should gaming should gaming be considered a sport? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we so, did talk about that. Yes, we did, we did talk about it. Okay, and remember the argument was that gaming shouldn't be considered a sport. Why? Some people were saying because it wasn't a... An activity that required the major physical part of your body. Okay, now I remind you, that's what you said, right? And I'm not. That's I'm, what a lot of other people said. Right. Yes, then, right. Uh, right. This is this is what you this is what you reported, right? Okay. And we're not saying this because me and OG disagree with each other. Me and OG, let's let's get this straight. Me and OG are on the same page. We feel that gaming should be a sport, but we are doing this for the sake of the podcast. So I'm sitting there at Wing Daddy's. Wing Daddy's, the best wing place you'll ever eat. Um, most most fattest wings you'll ever eat. Don't go to B-Dubs. Don't go to a wing stop. Don't go to some other... I know you're not up right now. You're not supposed to be up right now. You're supposed to be laying down. You can, you can wait. No, because you didn't listen. You can wait. Fathery stuff. One Fathery moment, please. stuff. One moment, please. Um, so... Because she was not supposed to be get up during while I was during my podcast, um, so, um, so what was it? The other wing place. Well, I don't remember what it was. It's called Brie Wings or Brie Wings. Brie Wings. That's what it's called. Don't go there. Go to Wing Daddy's. No, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just saying their wings are fatter, fatter and better. Um, so, anyway, as I'm sitting there, I'm watching ESPN. You would not believe what I saw on ESPN. What's that? I saw Drone League Racing. Drone League Racing on ESPN. On ESPN. Do you know what you do on Drone League? Do you know what you do when you race a drone? Uh, it, pretty much what it sounds like. You pretty much are controlling a remote vehicle and you're racing with other people. Not only are you doing that, but you have goggles on your head. And you actually see the first person view of your drone. And you're racing through an obstacle. You know what you're doing while you're racing that obstacle with a controller in your hand? What are you doing? You're sitting down. Oh. 
in a gaming so it's chair. Like you're playing a video game. So it's huh. like you're playing a video game. Huh. Interesting. How about that? How about that? Mm. But it's televised and it's a sport. Yeah. On on regular yeah, if TV. It's on ESPN. It's a sport. It's, it's a popular. sport. It's a sport. <laughs> it might be. It may not be shown live. It may be shown in episodes. But if it's on ESPN, it's a sport. So, for those use people that say video games is not a sport. If video games is not a sport, then neither is drone racing. Um, so, yeah, I'm. I don't understand why. I don't. I, I, I. To be honest with you, it's a traditional way of thinking. That's why, because people from old school don't really view video games. They view video games as something that kids do. They don't view it as something being competitive that could be people winning money and having a career off of. They just think of it as just a hobby that's no big deal. And I prefer to keep it that way. So they 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 want football, basketball, baseball. Like that's what they want. Diesel Girl said, I love I don't have Wing Daddy's a uh, Wing Daddy store in Wisconsin. I love wings too. Let's just put it like this. Okay? Let's say at 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 um Buffalo Wild Wings at we at um what you call it um wing stop your wings are like this right they're that small right but you go to wing daddy's you go to wing daddy's and they're that fat they're that big you eat ten wings you're full of ten wings and fries I promise I promise you. Um, in fact, I still now, do got they have hot cheese sauce. That's my question. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Cause that's also the only reason I even go to Wingstop is I really don't go there for the wings. I go for there for the, for the hot cheese sauce that you can get those fries in. That's so heavenly. I'm if sure. the hot cheese sauce, but I'm not down. Now, what do you mean by hot cheese sauce? I'm talking about like, like almost like queso. Like it's literally cheese, but it's hot. Yeah, okay. I think you meant like, like spicy. Cheese, I thought you meant, I thought you meant like spicy hot cheese. No. Yes, they got No, one. just like just like, you know, you yeah. would consider hot not necessarily spicy, but just hot cheese. That's literally yeah. what it is. Yeah, they they have that. They okay, have that. I may have to look it up one day in the future. Uh, there's one happen. right by my house. There's one by by Well, we just we just found out there's one right by my house and then there's one there's one closer to you, I think, too. Um, but they're they're really amazing. Um, and the they have like they have like all like awesome like flavors like they have raspberry jalapeno, uh, sweet. That ha- sounds weird. It sounds weird, <laughs> and then they have blasphemous <laughs> bacon, which is really good. It's one of my favorites, um, mm. and it's like a it's like a spicy bacon, um, but there's like actually no bacon on the thing. I don't know why they call it blasphemous bacon. It's probably some kind of a flavoring that is cooked in, like maybe a. Some kind of it's it's a way that they cook it. That's why. Like they're and and like they got some really really like okay. Remember when we went to um, Hooters that one time and we did that wing challenge? Yep. And we had uh, those. Uh, I want to say it was fifty, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, uh, hold on. Optional delusion. Saying hello. My dinner's ready, but I'm always. But I was ignoring it then to pop into your stream and it's nothing but food talk. So I can't ignore it anymore. So hello and goodbye. I'm sorry, I'm to the delusion, man. I'm sorry, bro. I love you, bro. I love you, man. But yeah, we just we just got into talking about freaking how I freaking got into this freaking drone racing league stuff. Um so yes, um, it's very interesting flavors, but very good flavors. And uh, if I'm correct, on Tuesdays it's fifty cent wings, and on th- or no, yeah, and Wednesdays it's fifty cent boneless wings. So uh, it's really cool, really cool, really good place to go. But anyway, I was mesmerized, not by the wings. I was mesmerized by Drone Racing League. Like, my wife was like, she's like, you're really sitting here watching this. I was like, you don't understand. Like, this this wins our debate. This totally wins our debate. Like, this is on TV right now. And I literally, after we got done eating, I literally got home and I sat there and watched some more Drone Racing League. 
It was. <laughs> wow. It's 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 actually interesting. It's really cool. Um, drones are really fast. Um, I mean, if you're into that sort of thing, watch it. But it just proves my point that if Drone Racing League is a sport, video games are a sport too, because you're literally just playing a video game. But they 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 market it. They market the show like this. They market the show. It's a real video game. That's how they market it. It's a real video game. The real video game. <laughs> so the video games that we are not playing are not real. They're imagination, apparently. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Epic Fail as ESPN. Because... Yeah, epic fail. You know what? Hey, they put a video game on their program. You know what? They just supported video games being a sport. I'm all right with that. They didn't have to tell me. They just showed me. Thank you, so. Optional Delusion, man. Thank you for popping in, man. Me so much, man. I love you too, brother. No, Option Delusion is like one of the most humblest, most generous people you'll ever meet on Twitch, man. Option, thank you so much, bro. Um, Definitely, but... So I don't know what ESPN is doing. And then the next thing I want to talk about before we end the show with some more video games live. Um, so Atari has decided to come back with a... Um, Ivy, go to the bathroom. Ivy. Hold and on. that's exactly what Atari is doing right now. They're yeah. summoning someone named Ivy who needs to go to the bathroom right now. Go to the bathroom. Right now. Right now. Um, so, no. Apparently, uh, no, that's not what Atari is doing. Apparently, Atari, and again, um, get video games on live. If you're listening, uh, sorry about the interruption, but got to be a father first, gamer second. Uh, Atari is coming out with their own console system again. So, is this one of those like things where it's going to be like a bunch of digital downloads and stuff? Like digital games in the game, yeah. yeah. Like like the the classic NES, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, this is yeah. a trend. Like, I'm not even sure I'm even excited anymore, just because if it feels like everybody is jumping on the bandwagon now. The only one that hasn't, and I gotta give them props to it, but it's weird what they're doing is Sega. Hmm. But they're yeah. doing but they're doing the mobile game thing, which I really think is weird. Yeah. And uh, on a similar note, actually, something that the woman brought up that she wants to get us into starting in August is Uh-oh. we're actually going to start. Our, we're actually going to do our PlayStation Now account. Hmm. I, I thought about that. And honestly, I didn't really understand it for the most part, but I looked into it today because when I got home, to, she go was back to bed. looking into it. And for those of you who don't know, basically PlayStation Now is, think of it as Netflix, but for video games. So instead of streaming a bunch of shows and movies or anime or whatever, you're basically streaming games. You get a, you get a list of a tons of games that you get to play, and you just play them. You know, right, and you don't it. download yeah. it. You don't download it. You don't have to do anything. You just click the play button and... Yeah, now know. there are some games because if you read the description like most of them you just play, but there are some games that you do have to download because of certain content that gets added but for the most part, yeah you just literally play the game and you're, it's, just, it's just a pretty solid service uh, the way that they have it scheduled now I don't know if this is going to change in the future or not but I believe for us we can get a week free our first month is ninety nine. I'm sorry, nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and then any month after that will be ninety nine ninety nine. Or we can spend. I'm sorry, each month will be nineteen ninety nine. Excuse me. Wow, that would have, that would have been atrocious if it was a hundred bucks a month. But for basically twenty bucks a month, you get to have access to tons of games, and not just for PS4, but PS3, and even you know the younger. PS Vita so, also. The PS Vita. PS Vita. So for those that you know complain that Sony's not backwards compatible, well, boom! Now you have backwards compatibility. Nah, so, yeah, Sony. Sony. Even even if you are a. Um, but here's the thing, though. Here's is where they're gonna get you. Oh gee, and this is one thing that you don't know. You gotta be a gold member plus also. To have PlayStation Now. Yep. You're sure about that? I'm positive. I'm like eighty percent positive. Okay, I'll have to look into that because they didn't say anything about that when we looked into 
actually setting it up, but I'll look again later just to confirm. Yeah, make double so. make sure because I'm I'm almost positive because um hold on. Diesel Girls my son says that gaming is a sport. MLG tournaments make it a sport, in his opinion. Plus, Legit. plus they require reflex and hand or eye coordination. Agreed. Yep. High five to Hunter, man. Way to go, yep. Hunter. Um, way to go, man. Strongly if you agreed. strongly agreed, strongly appreciated. Thank you. And that came from, I believe, a nine-year-old. I believe. Mm-hmm. So shouts out. Kids say the darnest things, but they say the truth, and the truth hurts. The it truth hurts. Hurt. But um, <laughs> yeah. So here's my problem, right? About PlayStation now. It's twenty dollars a month. What's that? It's twenty dollars a month. It's well, there's a reason for it being twenty dollars a month. Okay. Though. So if you were to let's say do what i was talking about doing a while back and having a gamefly subscription mm-hmm. you can pay a lot less but one you only get to play one game at a time but and you still have to wait for it to come in and you true. have to sit back but my my With playstation d- now you don't have to worry about waiting on nothing and you get to switch from one game to another without mm-hmm. any kind of lapse but okay correct Correct, one score for you. But here's where I'm going to hit it with the three-point swish. You don't get new games. like You don't need new games. Okay, but no, but say for instance, like, so the reason why I would want a Gamefly, say for instance, I want to I wanna check out Destiny 2, but I want to buy it. But I want to play it. Okay? I can't get Destiny 2 with, with um, PlayStation now. I can't get... Um, I can't get the new Call of Duty with PlayStation now. Gamefly, I can get that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 not this is this is gonna be irrelevant to you, but this is for the podcast. If you are really looking for something that's like on demand gaming, Xbox offers the same thing for half the price. So for ten bucks a month. You get the same thing, um, plus you can plus they offer like one like current title. So for ten dollars a month, I get all the games. Plus I can play Halo Five, right now, uh, for ten dollars a month. Um, and I and think there's a reason that it's cheaper though. And and you also have to pay for Xbox Live. But you also have to pay for PlayStation. You all, but it's the same thing. You also have to play for PlayStation also. It's the same thing. I don't have to play for PlayStation to play online. But I have to play... F- I don't have to play for Xbox to play online. I have to play for Xbox to play multiplayer. It's the same thing. You have to play for PlayStation to play on multiplayer. It's the same thing. In fact, um, I believe Xbox is cheaper uh, in some senses. But... Uh, maybe not having a PS4 is a blessing. Oh, now, now that's where you're, now, see, see, I'm not bashing the PS4. To be honest with you, uh, the PS4 is, uh, as reported, it's actually becoming, fixing to become the best by record sales, by record sales, not by opinion, by record sales, by numbers. It's beginning to be the best um console of all time is about to surpass to be the best console of all time um now that's definitely debatable <laughs> that's debatable but i'm talking about record numbers by right, by right. sales because a lot of people are buying ps4s now now what i'm trying to say is i i don't think that the PlayStation Now should make the make or break the PS4 because you don't necessarily need PS Now to play the PS4. It's just to play like older PS games if you don't want to go out and, and buy the game. Now, I feel that if you're on that kind of path, I would just get Gamefly because if you want to get an older game, that's cool. But if you want to get a newer game, say like you want to get Overwatch, right? Right. You want to play Overwatch? You can get it on GameFly. You know what I mean? Right. And but PlayStation now you can't get, um, get it. 
you know, to PlayStation Now. I feel like PlayStation Now is 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 expensive because it's twenty dollars, and most of the time I just want to play games, the old games that I've never played before, on PlayStation. You know, like there's a game that I loved on PlayStation Three called Warhawk. That was like one mm-hmm. of my favorite games. But do I want to pay twenty dollars a month for it? No, because after two months, after two months, I've already paid more than what the game's worth. See what I'm saying? So right. you see what I'm saying? I might as well just go and buy the game. You know what I mean? Right. So that's, that's and I think it also depends on what type of games you're playing. So I'm glad you brought that up because for me, it, I actually get more bang for my buck because I will be mainly playing RPGs, which are typically the most expensive games. So I will be actually, in in essence, paying less to play a ton of RPGs that I've never played before. Yeah. Because yeah. those games are usually like 60 to 80 bucks a pop. And for me to only pay 20 bucks a month to play like 10 RPGs or more, I'm not complaining. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but my question is to you. Have you done the... Because you can go into the PlayStation Now area without activating an account. So Yeah, that's, you, what, that's what we did. Okay, so you made sure the games that you wanted are there. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it, when, it wasn't really any specific game I was looking for, to be perfectly honest. I was, we were really just looking for new games to try out, and there were a ton. Okay. Okay. Well, that's cool. Well, then that's worth your money, then. And Diesel Girl said, "I respect for I respect that streamers have both PS4 and the Xbox. It's got to be expensive to have both accounts, and plus the games." Well, if I'm gonna be completely blunt and transparent and honest with you. Um, if it wasn't for a generous streamer or generous viewer that, um, hooks me up with their PlayStation, uh, actually my vulgar cousin that came in the stream today, he gave me his PS4. Um, he doesn't play his PS4. He strictly just plays his Xbox One. He saw that I was looking for a PS4 and came in and said, you know what? I'm going to give you my PS4. And... You know, mind you, me and my cousin haven't seen each other in probably 15 years. And he just came in here and said, I'm going to give it to you. So even though he sounds like he's always talking mess to me, he's just playing around. That dude's got major, major love for me. Um, And to be honest with you, some viewers have made it to where I'm able to, uh, uh, to where I'm able to afford um, the, um, the year pass for both systems so you know a lot a lot a lot of time like like the reason why i have a lot of things it's not because of me it's because of you guys you guys have shown awesome support and awesome love and if it wasn't for you guys i wouldn't have what i have but that's why i always make sure to give back to the stream any way that i can or always put back into the stream um, you know, people wanted me to have Overwatch on both systems, so you know, people made it happen. You know, people wanted me to have certain games on both systems, people made it happen. Uh, it's it's because of you guys, and that's why I love you guys so much. You guys are amazing. You know, uh, you guys have done so much, not just for Handy Kill Cam, but for the OG podcast and for OG also. So we are very grateful and very thankful. For all of you guys. Um, even if you're not able to give money. It's not about the money. It's about you being here. Being interactive. About you hosting. About you posting. About you retweeting. About you meeting. And about all those things. All those things count as love. And it's very much appreciated. Because you could be in somebody else's channel right now. Giving them love. And you know. Probably to some bigger streamer. But out of like the three billion million gazillion uh, streamers, you guys are here, and that's much appreciated. Um, so, shout outs to you guys. You guys, you guys are awesome. I may not be able to show my support. I try and share when I can, though. Hey, it's but you're like I said, you're here now, so that's all that matters. Um, and it's yep, much you're already doing your part right there. Yeah, like, and I know some streamers are not like that, and I know a lot of streamers, but I'm here to tell you, 
what separates me from a lot of the streamers because I'm not like everybody else. Um, very much not like everybody else. It's good to be different. Yeah. Financially support, I mean, I feel bad that I can't sub to my favorite streamers. Hey, I'm in the same boat, man, because all my favorite streamers now are affiliates. <laughs> all my, <laughs> all my affiliates, all my affiliates, all, all my favorite streamers are affiliates. And it's like, I can't sub to everybody, but I still try to show as much love as I can possible. Don't feel bad that you can't sub. That's why I don't make it to where you have to sub. You know, some people, they make it to where, like, well, if you want to chat, you got to sub. Well, if you want to play, you got to sub. Yes, I do have some sub perks. Like, if you sub, you automatically, you know, get raider priorities. But, hey, uh, I mean... You know, that's nothing, uh, that's not what everybody's going to want. You know what I mean? Not the, the average Joe Schmo is going to want Raider, Raider privileges. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't make it where you have to feel obligated to sub. Because I don't feel that any streamer should make anybody feel obligated to sub at any point. Um, now, if you want to sub, that's more important to you. But if you can't sub, that's fine. That's fine. Much love to you, regardless. A, a guy named Nemo says, You are my hero, Handy Kill Cam. Well, you are my hero, Nemo. You are my hero, because I want to play Call of Duty just as good as you. And Diesel Girl says, But it does it does make me happy to see Twitch give you all some recon uh, recognition for your hard work. Finally, yeah, no, definitely. I definitely appreciate it. It just, it's just crazy. Like, I wish, I wish Prime would give me like five subs a month, cause I would, I would go sub five people right now. And it's, but it's just hard, you know. But I, I sub, I sub to the main person that I wanted to with my Prime, so it's all good. Um, and the, and the awesome thing was, is during the show, I got to wear my grandpa T-shirt. I didn't, I didn't ask to wear that T-shirt. I didn't tell my wife to get it. My wife automatically picked it out. She picked out my grandpa's shirt. So my grandpa killed you t-shirt. Grandpa, he is a 50, I don't know if he wants me to tell his age, but I'm going to do it anyway. He's like a 58-year-old gamer and he plays Call of Duty. So we got we got a lot of gaming in us still, OG. That's good. You ready? Absolutely. And he's a 58-year-old streamer, so that's awesome. So I'm, I'm ready and I'm hype. Um... I believe that is everything that I wanted to discuss as far as yeah. everything else. But again, it is about that time. It yeah. is about that time. And I, I just want to stress, guys, please, 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 please go check out Video Games Live. Please. Like. It like Go to their Facebook page, you know, tell, like their page so you can get the updates. Tell them Handy Kill Cam sent you. You know, because I'm, I'm sending him this video as soon as it posts is on the Facebook. It's probably going to get done probably in the next 30 minutes or so. So go tell him Handy Kill Cam sent you. Tell him the guy in the, tell him the guy, tell him the guy in the wheelchair and the black guy. Well, I don't know if you want to go like that, but, you know, however. You just that, the guy in the wheelchair, that's all right. Yeah, the guy in the wheelchair, he'll know what you mean. The guy in the wheelchair in San Antonio, he'll know exactly what you mean. Uh, and if you don't, if you don't remember, if, if you want to go a little bit more detail, tell him about the guy with the cerebral palsy in his hands and then the, he'll remember. Uh, so, but it's about that time guys. And it's been much love. So awesome. Again, we are on episode 31. I never knew we'd make it this far. OG, but we have made it this far, my friend. Um, yes, we have. so again, go ahead and take us out. OG. Well, we do thank you guys for listening, especially those that are about to be the new listeners, thanks to uh, some, you know, new potential sponsors. And uh, we do thank Video Gamers Live folks for listening in once they get this video, and hope that you guys appreciate the shout-outs that we're giving to you. Now, for those who are just our regular listeners and anyone else listening, feel free to check out Handy Kill Cam on his Twitch channel because he's going to bring you all of those awesome shooters. He's going to give you a nice little headshot here and there. You wait for it. It's coming. It's coming. And, then if, and if you want to see some instructional 
interested in mobile gaming videos, go ahead and visit my YouTube channel at OG Crunkster. I will be doing. Up, oh, we lost him. Show you kind of enjoying it, and a few other games as well on the mobile devices. So if you need any mobile gaming um, interest, then visit my channel and hope you like that. Is there anything else you'd like to add, my friend? Yes, remember, 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 tomorrow is Thursday. So tomorrow I'll be streaming over at Able Gamers channel and doing charity work that I do every week for Able Gamers. For those that don't remember, Able Gamers helps raise money for people with disabilities that need certain controllers and certain equipment to game. So please, 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 please. If you can, come and show support and let's bring the Handy Kill Cam Squad to Able Gamers, as we always do every Thursday. And you know what we like to do on Thursday is we like to play Overwatch. So tomorrow is Overwatch Thursday, and we're going to be doing it live and doing it big, so don't forget. And if you do forget, I will be hosting from my channel. So if you see me, but you don't see me in my channel, remember, it's being hosted. And Diesel Girl... I will read your comment last. Your comment says, as the lights go out on my phone, um, Wheels and OG Krunksta sent me. Wheels and OG Krunksta sent you. <laughs> yeah, he probably not, not may not know what you mean by Wheels, but it's all good. Um, definitely, definitely. Much love, guys. And we are Audi. Peace.